All right, welcome everyone. Um, so in this video, I originally intended the uh, the null mixer to be a two-part series, but um, after, uh, I don't know, just thinking about it, I decided I wanna take a look at some of the network traffic and um, just put together a video talking about, uh, you know, how I, how I use Suricata and looking at some of the network traffic to help with identification. Now, one thing I actually didn't, I didn't notice when I first grabbed the sample, it was uh, just recently, at least at the time of the recording, um, uploaded to the Malware Bazaar. And when I looked at the analysis in triage, um, I, I misinterpreted the timestamp uh, that to me read 1203, so December 3rd. And then, yeah, that doesn't make sense, right? So I didn't, I just didn't catch it. My brain flipped it. Um, so it's a little bit older. It was uploaded quite, uh, you know, almost a year a little less than a year from when um, I started to do the analysis. I still think it's good analysis though, so I, I wanted to share it with you anyway. Um, but just keep in mind that, you know, I, uh, I tend not to pick things that are, are that many months old. <laughs> so anyways, um, with that being said though, I think it's also, you know, important to note the time because when we look at the samples and let's look at an actual um, analysis here, uh, analysis tab, um, what I was interested in is really just, I noticed in the config extraction, at least from that first execution, that there was no null mixer identification. That is, there was, <clears throat> there was no malware config. Um, scrolling, no, malware config extraction. Um, scrolling down to the network traffic. Um, I was also curious just what sort of IDS alerts would generate based off of uh, based off of the, the network traffic captured here. Um, in particular, I was looking for the razino.xyz domain because if you watched the previous two videos, I talk about how I you know how we've identified that in the binary so we know it's, that's part of its you know reporting you know, check-in communication. Um, now with this older PCAP, um, we have a valid check-in. Uh, some of those later PCAPs, this host is no longer online or it doesn't resolve. And so, you know, this is this is the reason that I wanted to use this older PCAP so that we have the full, you know, not only the initial check-in, but then actually the, the response as well. Uh, with triage, you can download the PCAP. Um, I'll also add this all these artifacts to the GitHub, uh, but there's the ability to download the PCAP. And usually um, in the signatures, I believe there are Suricata SIGs, or at least there used to be. Um, they're probably here right in front of me. I'm just not seeing them. Uh, but that doesn't that really doesn't matter because that's what we're going to talk about generating today um, on our own. Okay, so um, moving over to a terminal. You'll see I have the, the PCAP that I downloaded there from triage all ready to go. Um, if I want to see IDS alerts, I can do that locally. And I've got a couple of videos already on my channel talking about uh, installing Suricata in Remnix. So you can check that video out. I'll try to remember to add a link here in the video itself. Okay, uh, you can also go to suricata.readthedocs.org and read about, they have really good documentation, really good instru instructions on installing. Um, to install in Remnix, uh, I do grab the information from the install docs so that I can get the latest version I add it via PPA and then I, you can just do an apt install. So I, I think that's the easiest way. And by adding the OISF's PPA, OISF is the foundation that supports Suricata, um, you're gonna get the latest stable version. So as of the time of this recording, that was 6.0.9. Um, if you just install whatever the package manager is, you know, whatever that installs, if you just did an apt install Suricata, you're, you're likely gonna get something that's a little bit older. Now, odds are it really won't make a difference here, but if you know if you want the latest version, you know sometimes there's security patches. Oftentimes there's improvements in protocol parsing. That's the way to go. Okay, um, with Suricata, you can run the help provide a dash h argument, and what we're going to be doing is using its PCAP mode. So I'm not going to bother setting up Suricata to monitor an interface and replay network traffic. Um, that's something that that we could talk through at some point. Um, but I don't, I don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. We can just use it to, to replay this PCAP. Um, but even with that, uh, I've actually created a script. You can see it's called Surrey Ingest PCAP. And I'll, I'll make sure to get this link in the description as well. Uh, this is available as a gist and GitHub. And um, so we can, you can download that. And I'm going to use Visual Studio Code to talk a little bit about that. Um, the idea behind it is relatively straightforward. 
and that it first looks for a PCAP file just to make sure you provided that as, a, as an argument. You'll see that when I run the script. Um, your log location, so temp suricata that way whenever the system reboots, that stuff gets cleared. Um, and if you were, you know, if you were running suricata, you know, sniffing live traffic on, at the, on the same host, um, then you wouldn't want it to log to the same directory that that, you know, that service mode version of suricata was logging. So that just helps to deconflict that. Uh, this will create the log location if it's not there. And then this is probably the most important part is the suricata command. So here we invoke suricata. This is the location of the configuration file. So after installing, you'll have the suricata YAML at etc suricata. Um, this just avoids doing checksums on, I believe, the packets, the TCP somethings, I forget. Um, not important. The dash R is the PCAP mode. So that's just going to look for the, you know, the argument that we passed in, the PCAP. Um, Suricata can ingest an entire directory of PCAP though, so you don't have to provide it a single PCAP at a time. Um, and then our log directory is uh, temp Suricata. So I guess there is actually a little bit of an error here in that um, I could swap that out. So I, I'll try to remember to get that updated. I don't want to do it now since I'm recording. Um, but that, that's all that would need to be done there, so I don't know how I overlook that. Um, once Suricata runs, uh, you'll see I'll invoke it here in just a minute. It's going to generate a log file called eve.json and in this case it's going to be in the in the temp location so again i should have i should have variableized that um, but uh, that eve.json will contain all of the data that it generates and there's a lot of data there because it's going to be all of the protocols it's going to be all the flows it's going to be file identification and you performance information anything a lot of thing a lot of information can be in there so what we'll do is we'll grep that file looking for event types we're just this is just going to look for alerts and then from that once those event types are you know those match uh, then just pull out the important parts of the alert record using jq okay um oops this, this is meant to be commented out we'll also i'll also come back to that in just a moment okay so that's the basics of that script now, uh, what do we before we run it? We need to make sure you have we, we have rules, um, and Suricata update is probably the easiest way to do that. It comes with Suricata now, at least all of the major recent releases, and that's just going to go and um, essentially look at all of the sources that you have configured. Um, default is to get emerging threats open, and I think there's a couple others. Um, you can look at the Suricata update commands to list your sources and list enabled sources. Uh, and then it's going to pull from those sources and drop those files in the location that Suricata is configured to look for rules. So uh, you'll see here it's writing rules to varlib Suricata rules, and then it, it coalesces them into one rules file. So you just get one Suricata.rules file. So there's a total of 40,841 rules of which 33,134 are enabled. So uh, quite a few rules. Most of these are coming from ET Open, uh, and this this does have a, a bit of a performance impact. Um, not so much once Suricata is up and running, but you'll see when we run the script that it it you know takes a few seconds for Suricata the engine to initialize and then for it to load all of those rules. But then once they're loaded, then it's it's good to go. But in this mode, you know I'm running it every time I process a PCAP, so there's a little bit of overhead there. Um, you know, if you really wanted to, you could figure out how to disable some of these, but that's beyond the scope of the video and for demonstration purposes, it doesn't really matter. So, okay, we ran Suricata update, Suricata update, again, pulls from the rule sources and make sure that we have the latest and greatest. So, uh, at least from the sources, emerging, emerging threats open. Uh, once we have that done, we can process our PCAP. So now we just invoked the ingest script and we tell it, provide it with the path, absolute or relative to our PCAP. Uh, now you might get some errors here. The red are errors or warnings, I guess. Um, these are easy enough to fix. It's just saying that the, the there's different protocols, M, a SIP, MQTT, RDP, and their enable status hasn't been set. So if we wanted to fix that, we can just do that real quick while Suricata is running in the background or running in a different tab. Uh, we have to uh, access the YAML file. So the main configuration file, which is suricata.yaml, 
Uh, we have to do that as a root as the root user. Um, from here, we'll just I'll just do a search for MQTT, and I'm just going to comment those out. Right. So now we can save that file, and next time we run it, we won't have any of those warning messages. Okay, so as you see, in the meantime, we have our results. So Suricata ran. Um, this is just kind of status information. Hey, a, a PCAP file was read. One file was read. This, this is the number of packets. This is the number of bytes. And now here's the results. So this is just the alert data uh, that was generated from this PCAP. And you can see that there is a lot. And that's you know to be expected because we have a, you know, a dropper that executed several other pieces of malware, um, you know, it looks like Redline, uh, possibly DanaBot, Raccoon Stealer. Um, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. So Sokolars, Sokolars, you know. So anyways, there's a lot of stuff here. Um, and while this is really helpful, there's so much stuff. It's, I think it's kind of hard to visually process that. Um, now we have you have a couple of options. Um, the eve.json file is located here, and you could just start you know kind of, kind of searching away with JQ if you wanted to. So you could change this this query. You could query it directly, um, however you wanted to do that. But I think there's an even easier way, and that is just to grab evebox. So um, as I mentioned, I've got a couple of videos around Suricata already on the channel. Uh, I I do have one about installing eve installing evebox in Remnix. So uh, check that one out. Um, I've already done that. So Evebox is installed and, and ready. And now you, if you wanted to add it to the script, for example, this would launch Evebox in one shot mode, which means that it's just going to process this JSON file and give you uh, essentially a UI in order to play around with the data there. Um, I don't need to rerun the script though. So we'll just go Evebox one shot, uh, temp suricata eve.json. Okay. Um, now keep in mind, um, I made I made reference to uh, replaying the PCAP, and that is one one benefit. You know, like if we set up Suricata to listen to an interface, um, and then replay the traffic, then it would you know, Suricata would be ingesting it as if it were were live on the network, and it would be a little bit more realistic to how Suricata is actually deployed. But I don't really need to go through. We don't really need to go through that extra steps. The only thing we have to do is recognize that the PCAP is old and we have to adjust the time filter. So once we've done that, now all of the, the main inbox here, all of these alerts are gonna show up. Now, I, again, the original idea was I was interested to see if Null Mixer had a signature that matched. And you know, here's ET Open from today, from the time of this recording. So almost a year later, and there isn't a specific alert around Null Mixer. Um, that doesn't mean that there isn't one in the ET Pro set, and there, there probably is. Um, if we wanted to just do a little more digging, to like 100%, I don't see one, then what we could do is you can drop down the events, and this is going to have all your other data. So, uh, you know, again, Suricata is not just simply producing IDS alerts, but it's got all of these other, all of this other protocol data. So, uh, for example, if there was FTP traffic in here, then you could see it. If there was, uh, what would be a good one, SMTP traffic right? You, you would see it. Uh, this one just doesn't happen to have any. But I do know, and again, if you reference back to the videos from the initial analysis, uh, this request was going to go out over a, uh, HTTP. But if we search for the host, uh, you'll see that there is, there is our request. So um, there's the GET request. So we have the, the, that HTTP traffic, um, even though it wasn't, um, it wasn't tied. Well, it... so if we filter on the host, we can see that we do in fact have some HTTP events specifically related to it. And, and of course we saw that when we looked at the traffic and triage already. So we were expecting it. And if we click on the event, you can see information around the event, uh, protocol specific. So HTTP request and response headers. If you scroll down, you'll see the raw JSON fields, just in case something isn't displayed in the UI. Um, and then you can click on the flow ID, and the flow ID will show us 
um, everything around that flow. So we've got a TCP record as well as we do have one alert. So um, there was an alert and it is an ET info name cheap URL forward, right? So I wouldn't say necessarily a specific um, alert to null mixer, but an alert nonetheless. And so this, this flow view allows us to see if any alerts tied to that particular flow, in this case, around our get request to Rosino. Um, in this case, the request to our, our host. Uh, now, in terms of crafting a, 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 an IDS rule, we could definitely do that. I think there's some pretty good indicators and patterns in here, particularly around the URL um, to create that. So um, maybe for the next video or one of the next uh, future videos here, we'll take a look at actually doing that. But for now, I just wanted to show how we could you know, go from PCAP to generating our own IDS alerts using you know free and open source uh, rule sets and then do some investigation using a very nice interface through Evebox in order to just understand a little bit more about the traffic. Um, we focused on the null mixer side of things, uh, but if you wanted to focus in on, um, you know, say that the red line alerts, you can do very similar. It's very easy to now quickly um, navigate to see, okay, here's the flow. Here's all the alerts that were generated because of that. Um, and now you can pivot around this data and, and, and it's, it, it almost becomes then like, like a, I don't know, like a Wireshark experience, but um, you, you have the IDS alerts. Uh, speaking of that, I do think there is an integration for Suricata alerts into Wireshark. So maybe that's something else I could talk about at some point in time. I just have never, I just haven't worked with it. Um, so all of these ideas I get, I write down so that uh, I can put them onto my content planning strategy and cover them at some point. Um, anyways, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. If you have any comments or any other suggestions, uh, the comments are open. So I look forward to hearing back from you. Otherwise, hope you enjoyed the video and talk to you all in the, uh, the next one.